So you had a keynote this morning and you talked about your new gig at yeah. HP. Yeah. And um, one thing that struck me right off the bat was you mentioned that HP is eating their own dog food because mm -hmm. you're so big you have to eat your own dog food. Can you explain a little bit why and what, what that means? Well, um, part of what's fascinating is that it's, uh, particularly HP Cloud, it's not about just the product that we ship on servers, but we actually have a public cloud. So you have a credit card, you go to hpcloud.com, um, you put in your credit card, you get access. Um, and so that's a little bit different. And part of the difference there is that not only is that, you know, we're not only doing public cloud, where, but we can actually also ship it on servers. And that, that's a very unique sort of scenario because of the cloud plays we just see today, especially in the public cloud area, like these are not companies that have any, you know, history nor, you know, they, they don't have any past where shipping software is something they have in their DNA. And what's kind of fascinating about HP is that that's actually in HP's DNA. And combining that with public cloud, well, makes for a really kind of an interesting mixture we don't actually see normally. So, and you guys are so big yeah. that you actually have to use your own technology that you're shipping to your customers. Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's funny, like we could say you have to, but also we want, want to. to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because you know, that's the only way we improve things. When uh, we have developers working on like, uh, you know, platform as a service work, um, they're not developing on a, in a sandbox in a different data center. They're, they actually develop inside of the actual cloud. So everything is developed in the cloud. So when they run and test and they find problems, those problems are actually reported back, you know, as any other customer would report problems back. So it's, you know, it's, a, it's something we want to do because it actually improves the software. So where do you see this evolving? Your, H, your role at HP and the cloud offering that you guys have, how do you see this evolving under you? So what HP looks at this, uh, the way that HP looks at this right now is it's not only a move to do public cloud, but it's what we talk about is converged cloud. So the idea that, you know, the cloud that we have is public, cloud that is private, cloud that is a managed cloud, all of these pieces. Um, and so it's this, you know, spectrum of uh, usage at this point. And so what is my role in this? Well, right now I handle uh, engineering uh, for uh, platform as a service. Um, I also handle the uh, open source group inside of, uh, uh, inside of uh, HP Cloud Division. Um, I don't know, it's been kind of a, a, kind of a, what would I actually like to take on? Uh, and what do I actually have time to take on more than a, uh, really pretty much anything else? And there's, it's really fascinating because HP has like a historic, um, strong interest inside of open source. And so like finding other folks inside the company who have been doing open source work, who do, you know, work on the Linux kernel, like, HP has a lot of open source uh, DNA in it, um, and it's been kind of fascinating to go and find those people and meet them. So. Yes. So this concept of the converged cloud, that sounds really interesting. Yeah. Is, is anyone else talking about converged clouds? Um, no, we're pretty much the folks who actually really started this conversation. I mean, if you think about like, like what I said, the other cloud providers, uh, a Google or Amazon, they don't, they, they have a hosted product. Yeah. They host things. They do not, you know, ship data centers to people. You know, their entire, you know, um, what they bring is like, we're going to, you know, run this in our data centers. But that actually doesn't work for a lot of folks. I had, um, about a year ago, uh, when I was actually looking at, uh, like, where would I want to go or what I would want to do next, um, I had actually was here at OzCon and I left a, a meeting and I was walking away with a CTO who um, comes from a, a large, well-known, Geneva-based company, and I, I was asking him, so like, so what do you think? Would you really be able to have any of your stuff hosted on like anybody else's uh, servers? And he was like, no, that couldn't happen. Regulatory reasons, um, privacy concerns, security, like there is no way we could actually let that do, like that, that happen. That has to run in our data centers. And I can remember a few uh, years ago talking to a CCO at uh, one, uh, one large Japanese bank where what they have is they have you know, a data center that humans don't even come in. Like machines get rolled in and then when machines get pulled out, they go in by the rack, they come out by the rack and they're crushed. That is the, there is no, there's nothing else they can do. That is their environment. And could they actually ever host that stuff beyond their environment? No. And, th and there's also like, Companies we find will push things out to the cloud, and sometimes they're going to want to pull those things back in. And other times, they actually find that local hosting, they may start there, and then, okay, we actually, turns out we want to push that in. Or 
you know, we need to exit, like we need more capacity right now. So they want to push those things back out to the cloud. So HP is in a very unique position in the fact that having both a public cloud and at the same time having a history and you know current business practice of shipping software, yeah. that's not something we actually see in uh, the rest of the business environment. So I think HP has a, a fairly unique uh, position it can be in right now. So you guys can converge and take things forward in the future. Are you building tools that make it easier for yes. people to converge and scale and migrate between the convergence of open, private, Yes. Yes. I mean, that's part of what, um, in my keynote I talked about, like, here are the current concepts that are being done in OpenStack. So we see things like compute and storage, but, you know, that is just the tip of the iceberg. There is so much more that has to be done, and we're starting to, like, see more open source projects come on and fill these roles, And but there's just a really, like, an interesting, like, it's interesting, fascinating, and growing market that's occurring around that right now, because there are so many, uh, there's just so many pieces still left to be done, and this really is a, a very new area of technology, um, especially when you look at how is this open source, how is this deployed, and how is this especially deployed at scale? It's very easy to do, like put it on four or five machines, but when you start working in hundreds, and then you get through thousands, and you move up 10,000, that requires an entirely different shift, and it's not only a shift in like how the software works, but it's also a shift of, shift how, can you actually test this stuff and really make sure it's going to work? And that's something that, you know, it's really fascinating. And I, that was part of the, the like, piece that really drew me to, to HP. Yeah, challenge. Yeah. 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 So, where, uh, you're, you're going to take this forward in the future. Yep. And you're part of this new open group. Yep. Are you guys hiring open source developers? Oh, yes. Yes, good. Yes, oh, oh I, have, uh, I have about, uh, let's see, about... I have about 20, 30 can like positions in Seattle right now. I got another great 10 in another group. Like, we are definitely hiring, and we can uh, definitely. Uh, I, I would love to hear from more folks because, especially important, finding people who have both an interest and or even skill in yep. doing work in open source means that they already have like. For one thing, it's easy because they have a, a resume that they're carrying with them. We can always go and look like, oh, look, this is work you have done. But we can also look and see, how did you actually work in other communities? And so what's it going to be like to work with you? Yes. And so, and bringing people in who already have that knowledge and have that understanding of how to work like that, that's just, uh, that, that's, uh, that's really very valuable. Great. Well, Brian, I look forward to seeing where you guys take this in the future. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you.